Welcome, everybody, to the very first episode of Kenshi, Shex Conquest, which originally streamed live on Twitch. Before we start, I just want to cover some of the backstory, rules, and goals so that this series can make a bit more sense to you all. We'll be starting with the rock bottom start, which means that our main character, Rockvin, will start starving, penniless, and an amputee missing a left arm. This series will make a lot more sense if you understand the backstory and history and lore of the Shek. The Shek are a powerful, noble warrior race, much like the Samurai. The last leader of the Shek waged a war against the Holy Nation and was overthrown by the current leader, Asada the Stone Golem. Asada the Stone Golem overthrew Shagger, the previous sovereign, because she thought that the Shek going to war against the Holy Nation would bring the downfall of the Shek. As a result of the overthrow of the last sovereign, many splinter factions of the Shek have now formed. You have the Band of Bones, Kral's Chosen, the Berserkers, and now our little faction founded by our main character, Rockvin. Rockvin wants to defeat Asada and all of the other false leaders, Flying Bull, Tor the Fearless, and Ghost. He also wants to continue Shagger's conquest and defeat the Holy Nation, and to start a new glorious Shek City. The rules for this series are relatively simple. We will be Shek only. No other species, no animals, just Shek. We will never have an alliance with the false leaders. We won't trade with the false colonies. The warrior and servant castes that the Shek traditionally follow do not matter to us. And the hornless people that have been dishonored by having their horns cut off, well, that does not matter to us either. All of the unique recruits will keep their names, but this is not an Iron Man series. And with all of those rules set forth, let's get started. So here I am in the middle of the Great Desert, and anyone that knows anyone that knows Kenshi knows that this is not a great place to be. For several reasons. One, it is deep in the United Kingdom's empire, and they're really not known to be very kind, especially if you look destitute. It's full of manhunters and slavers and the city heroes and sand skimmers. Very, very easy to die. I'm going to have to be very careful. Uh, one of the fundamental game mechanics of the game is that you start off at, at sort of nothing. So if I check my stats here, I am nothing and I am nobody. I have no skills, terrible attributes. So I'm going to have to be very careful. It would be extraordinarily easy for me to get KO'd and lose immediately. And I'm not really sure what I would do if that was the case. So the first thing I want to do is to go to show Batai, but I have to be careful because uh, Shek aren't really welcome anywhere outside of Shek territory. And by design of this series, I'm not really welcome in Shek territory either. If you read the rules, I can't trade with the Shek, which means I can't go to Squin or Admag or Last Stand, any of the Shek cities, and do commerce with them. Which means that I'm stuck doing commerce with very few people in this world. Maybe the Hivers, uh, possibly some of the Holy Nation outlaws that are in the hub, but there's not a lot of safe spots for me. Now, because I am rock bottom, I'm also missing a left arm. It is gone forever. I will never get it back. And I am slowly starving, which is ruining my stats, my run speed, etc. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is to head to Shobatai, maybe do some mining to get a little bit of uh, money to buy some food, but I have to avoid a lot of enemies out here. So, for instance, there are starving vagrants uh, behind this sand cloud out on the horizon that would kill me if given the chance. And run speed when you're weak, is about your only defense. The problem is, Shek are notoriously slow. Uh, they're one of the slowest races in the game, which means that until my athletics levels up considerably, I can't flee from anything. It's sort of by design, because Shek, Shek's, uh, their culture believes that death on the battlefield is the most honorable death. So why would they flee? Why would they ever flee? But we're sort of rewriting Shek culture because it has not worked so far. It didn't work for Shagger. It didn't work for Kral. The Shek have been relegated to a corner of this of this continent, uh, never to really rule, but only to be defeated 
by the throngs of humans that outnumber the Shek probably something like 50 to 1. Uh, and not only that, Shek can't really swim either. So, of the other species that exist in this world, you have humans, which are the most common. Oh, who are you? City heroes? Oh, I gotta avoid them too. Uh, so you've got humans that are most common, and they're split up into many different factions. But primarily, you have the United... Um, the United Cities up here, who are sort of slavers, um, they're merchants and slavers. And then you have the Holy Nation in this valley, primarily, and they are xenophobes, racists, uh, also slavers. Humans basically aren't good species. <laughs> There's very, very few humans. I mean, you have some splinter factions of humans that are trying to resist uh, the way the world is. Oh, they're also uh, misogynists. So they're misogynist, xenophobic slavers. Uh, and then you have skeletons, and there's very few skeletons in the world. And they... Oh yeah, here we go. The the city heroes are going to bully me. I actually wouldn't mind if the hero boss bullied me. Because if they start to fight me, the town guards here in Shobatai, um, they'll put them down. And I can steal their loot. So it might be a good idea for me to continually taunt the city he heroes. And these city heroes are really just like, um, they're a tiny little faction of racist bullies that go run around yelling slurs at minorities. That's that's essentially all they do. And, uh, and if I stand here and let them taunt me long enough, they will draw arms. And as you can see, they're calling me primitives. They're going to call me... Um, you know, all sorts of things. They're going to call me toothpick and bonehead just because of the way I, I look. Spiky, etc. They're, uh, they're not friendly. <laughs> Stay away from my jobs, yeah. So I'm sort of baiting them into a fight as the town guard watches. Come on. And I just have to be careful with this because I can't let them land hits because the town guard wouldn't help me either. Like if I get knocked out and get some sort of fatal bleed, uh, they would just let me bleed out on the sand. Doesn't look like uh, these heroes are taking the bait. So my movement speed right now is 14 and their movement speed is 18, so I can't outrun them. So it doesn't make sense for me to leave the security of the border here. But come on. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to bait them into a fight. So I can steal their loot. Which would be a good way, a good way to get an upstart. But they're just not taking it. Not at all. Oh, but a skimmer. Okay, so yeah, so here's a skimmer. I could loot the skimmer uh, when the guards kill it. And the skimmer will have a little bit of meat and will have some teeth that uh, I can sell. Oh, did I? What just happened to all? Okay, well, now I just have follow me. I think I accidentally hit the wrong hotkey and threw it out. Yeah, come on. Come on, City Heroes. Fight. I need them to initiate it or I am guilty. That's kind of the way that, uh, that the law works. First to throw the punch is the assailant. So I'm going to walk out this way. A little bit further and hope that they try something. They're just not going to. What I want to do is I want to try to mine this copper resource. And mine the copper resource for a little bit of money so I can start clothing myself. And feed myself. Because I'm going to slowly become starving. Now, when you're looking at these guys, uh, their attack and defense and strength and... D his strength is pretty high, but the rest of their stats are actually pretty low. These guys are not high tier, but they're obviously... I couldn't even take them on a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, not with my gear and skills or anything. I start as a, a basically a zero. Man, they're really not... Uh, normally, they try to fight. I'm going to speed up time... 
which is a little dangerous because they'll just just try to jump me at some point. Oh, there we go. Get the spiky. There it is. So now the guards here acknowledge the fact that I'm the victim. They did just whack me in the leg. But now I'm just going to hang around and watch the town guard, who are much, much stronger than these bullies, these racist little idiots. I'm going to watch them get tooled. I'm going to steal their gear and sell it to a vendor inside. The cost of putting up with their uh, racism, their xenophobia. Oh, down you go. All right. Well, that's a strong start. I'll start patching myself up. While the rest of them get the snot kicked out of them. Who needs to be a, uh, who needs to be a copper miner when you can just let the town guards knock some sense into these racists? Uh, so the thing is, they're getting arrested rather quickly, so I need to get, I need to very, very rapidly start looting. Because if I don't, uh, all of the... All the benefit of getting them killed goes away. So I'm going to drop the foul meat, which only hivers can eat anyway, and start grabbing as much of their gear as I can before they get sent to uh, the prison. So it looks like I only managed to get the loot of two of them, which is fine. That's a, still a really good start. I don't see any other bodies out here. Byron, thanks for all the gifted subs. Cheers. Right, let's go ahead and head into the bar and sell our bounty. So until I have my athletics up, it's going to be really important for me not to be encumbered. So I can keep building up my athletic skill and to be able to run faster than the things that can kill me. Because it's really dangerous to be slow. So here we are, and I am going to probably keep the ninja mask and sell everything else. So if you take a look at the drifters' boots, they have good coverage, they don't slow me down. And maybe I'll, I'll keep the pants and the shirt too, because they're not really worth very much comparatively, and sell everything else. Even, even the weapons, uh, because the weapons aren't likely to allow me to win fights anyway, so why keep them? All they do is slow me down. So now that I am no longer encumbered at all, uh, you'll see over here, my athletics is, um, I'm gaining athletic skill 150% and strength and toughness skill, well, strength skill 0% because I'm not encumbered. The best way to train athletics is just to run around a lot. The best way to train strength is to encumber yourself and then pick up a corpse or, or a body of some sort and run around with the corpse or body. But I'm more concerned with ath athletics right now than anything else. It's also really important that I have some money in my pocket because one of the things that is illegal here in the United Cities is to be a beggar. So every now and then the town guard will bully you and if you can't have, the, the currency is called cats. If you don't have any cats in your pocket, they will think you are a beggar, which is against the law and they will, um, well, they'll kill you. So, don't be poor. It's illegal to be poor. <laughs> is basically what I'm trying to say. Nothing new there, yep. So what I'm trying to do now is to gain a little bit of wealth to be able to feed myself so that I can safely raise my athletic skill and uh, no longer be hungry. So right now my hunger is reducing my movement speed by two miles an hour. Uh, sorry for those of you, everyone else in the world that uses uh, metric, but... Um, we want to become faster. So my max possible speed is 60 miles an hour, and right now we're running at about 14, and I want to get it up to about 20. At about 20 miles an hour, we can outrun most of the scary things in the world. Not all of them, but most of the scary things in the world, allowing me to leave the desert. Because if I started to try to run to the border of the desert right now, I would almost assuredly not make it. I would almost assuredly uh, get jumped by... Sand Ninjas, or More City Heroes, 
or the town guard themselves or something. Some are starving vagrants, manhunters, slavers. There are so many factions out here that that want to do me ill uh, that it's really not safe to go out there. If I, if I take a look at the factions here, you can kind of see the factions that I've interacted so far. Um, for now, I'm just going to name the faction Rockfin, but it's not going to stay that. So here are the ones that I know of right now, but uh, there is a lot of factions out there in the dunes uh, that would want to enslave me. Not good. So mining, uh, mining some copper will raise my laboring stat. So if we take a look at the stats here, as this can serve as a bit of a tutorial, there are, you have your primary attributes, strength, which is raised by encumbering yourself and running around encumbered or fighting with a heavy, heavy, heavy weapon. Toughness, which is raised by getting beat up or whatever. There's other ways to sort of exploit toughness. Dexterity, uh, which is raised by hitting things with fast, sharp weapons. And perception, which is for uh, accuracy and crossbows. Uh, then you have different weapon classes. Now, the Shek are mostly known to use um, big, heavy weapons. Like the larger hackers, heavy weapons, and large, blunt weapons. Like... That's what Shek do. They they carry around like 50 kilo. I think Berserk, or think Guts from Berserk. That's the typical Shek weapon. Uh, then the combat, which is attack, defense, dodge, and martial arts. Martial arts is only raised when you punch things. Uh, dodging is very, very important because it, when you have really high level dodge, enemies can't land a hit on you unless you're uh, outnumbered considerably. And then melee attack is and defense is you know, striking and defending, or parrying, I guess. You have your range skills. Funny enough, uh, precision shooting is all... This one I love. Uh, so when you're trying to level up your ranged abilities here, you only really level up uh, precision shooting when you shoot your teammates. So one of the metas of the game is when you're trying to level up uh, ranged, like, crossbows, uh, you take the weakest crossbow that you can find, so you don't kill your teammates, because if you immediately go to the strongest crossbow, you are going to be shooting your teammates to death. Uh, then we have some thievery. The thing is, the Shek are very honor-bound, so I'm not really going to get into a lot of thievery here, just because that's not the Shek's way, that's more of the Hiver's way. Or other humans. Uh, then you've got athletics and swimming. Now, due to me being a Shek, I do have an athletic uh, penalty to, to leveling up. Which means that it's harder for Shek to level up. And other races, it's easier. All races sort of have different strengths and, and bonuses. So, for instance, as Shek, I level up toughness and strength better than dexterity or per perception. I have uh, even penalties to dexterity. Uh, I do level up melee attack, you know, but not dodge. And that's going to be true for all Shek. Some other species in Kenshi have subspecies or subclasses. So, for instance, Hivers, you can have drones, which are really good at labor, and you can have princes, which are really good at, like, thievering and, and lockpicking and the like. Um, so they have varying degrees of, of what they're good at and what they're bad at. Shek, Shek are just Shek. Now, in the lore of Kenshi, Shek have two caste systems, the warriors and the servants, uh, but we don't really believe in that. So all I'm doing right now is leveling up my laboring, but this is so that I can simply feed myself. Because I'm out of food. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build up enough um, wealth to be able to spend the time to level up um, my athletics so I can get out of this desert alive. Also, wouldn't it be terrible to see if there's anyone to befriend and hire in the bar here? Because it's possible I could recruit. But it looks like all the other Shek are just mercenaries for hire. Yeah, they're all just mercenaries for hire. What about upstairs? Yeah, nothing upstairs. Now, this town has a bar, uh, some residences. There's a travel gear shop here. So let me poke into there. Hey, Laura, thanks for the resub. And so many other resubs, too. So travel gear might have backpacks, which 
can be very useful tools. Oop, bottom floor. Where am I planning on settling down? Uh, where all Shek want to settle. Uh, no, I don't want any of this. I'd rather have thieves bags. Uh, next door is mechanical shop. That's going to be more building materials. The barracks is not interesting to me. Nor is the noble house. Residence. Residence. General shop. We could check the general shop. I don't think there's going to be anything for me, for me there. This is a slave shop. So if we take a look at these slaves. They have Greenlanders. And Scorchlanders. A Hiver. Another Greenlander with a basket on his head. He looks like kind of a... Oh, yeah, he is a sand ninja. Okay. I was going to say he looks like a sand ninja. And then we have this bakery here. Uh, we might be able to talk to some people in the bakery for recruiting. Right, let's check out this general shop. General shops. One of the things I'm going to want to buy eventually is an authentic uh, skeleton repair kit or some sort of repair kit because... I'm going to be replacing my missing arm with robotics, uh, but I don't need that yet, so it doesn't make sense to buy that yet. I'm just looking to see if there's any other Shek that I can talk to to have join me, because there is definitely safety in numbers. Uh, that's a that's a hiver. Wait, get in there, Rackvin, get in there. Baker. No, there's no one else to talk to. And given the time of day, most of these shops are going to close soon anyway. So here's a headgear shop at the corner. I already have headgear on, which is uh, protecting me a little bit from dust storms. The police station. This uh, this police station here is going to have all of those city heroes that were trying to beat up me uh, in the cages up here. So you can, you can see some of these... Um, Okay, well, they're actually standing outside of their cages, but uh, they're supposed to be inside. And you can see they're, they're nursing their wounds. Pre pretend they're indoors. And then we have the Shinobi Thieves. It's possible that I, I could try to trade with the Shinobi Thieves here. Uh, but I definitely don't have the money to uh, join them. Joining the Shinobi Thieves, the Shinobi Thieves are, are sort of like a thief faction uh, that have um, headquarters everywhere around the world and they have a lot of training facilities inside the towers uh, but it's it's a pretty expensive membership fee so it's one way to help train and level up really early on but it comes at a uh, pretty steep cost unless you get thieving i will say that if you spend your time uh, sneaking and stealing you sort of break the game pretty quickly because the game doesn't have a lot of anti-theft mechanics and it allows you to steal a lot of stuff uh, so you can sort of in my opinion ruin the game if you steal too much which is also true in most role-playing games if you go from impoverished to uber wealthy you sort of skip the whole build-up um, that is generally the meat of the game well there's nothing else to buy right now um, I am no longer hungry, so my max speed is up to 16 miles an hour. I think what I'm going to do is just mine a little bit more to get a little bit more food, and then to try to run around Shobatai here uh, to build up my athletics so that I might be able to escape. Oh, I think these starving vagrants are about to get walloped. I also have to be very careful uh, checking in on myself to make sure that Oh no, the town guards are ignoring them for now. Oh no, there they go. <laughs> bye bye, vagrants. Uh Yeah, let me just uh let me just they're all gonna have like little metal iron bars and not be worth much for loot. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Ooh, that's not a bad horse chopper either. That's a that's a good sort of um starting weapons, I guess. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to determine what weapons are good and what are not. Um, if you look at the stats here, cutting damage 0.47 versus other weapons that are going to be... This one's 0.16. 
so on and so forth. You know, not all not all weapons are the same. All right, I'm going to try to loot as much of them as I can. Because, you know, I'm a scrounger. And Petrable, thanks for the bits. All right, let's do business. Now, these pants here, this armored rag skirt, slows you down. Uh, as you can see, the athletics effect, 0.89. So, not all armor is worth wearing right when you get it or unlock it. Uh, some of it is actually going to hinder you. And I I'm planning on actually just selling all the clothing they have on right now, because I'll just get some of their clothing. And free up spots. For oh, there are some of them getting up. Don't get up, guys. The town guards aren't going to like that. And yeah, is this stealing? Uh, yeah, but to a shack, it's a little bit different. Stealing versus looting the fallen. Uh, it isn't my kill, but there's only a, a limited amount of wealth that you can make this way anyway. So this horse chopper is not as good as the one down. Essentially, the rustier and the more red that a weapon looks, uh, generally speaking, the worse it is. So I'll keep this horse chopper. For myself. Um, and we'll just continue to do some looting here. Randall Thor. Thank you for the bits. I am the Lord of Plunder. Oh, a spike club. That'll fetch a penny or two. It's just a vanilla exploit? Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm also stealing, like, pennies at a time. It's really dreadfully inefficient. I might add. So it's not like I'm hitting pay dirt and, oh, look, look at all the money I have now. It's like, uh, I'm basically looting hobos. But they're not Shek hobos, so. Alright, probably one more run and I'll be good. I have about 2,000 cats now, which is honestly not that much. It's a very limited amount of cats. But I didn't have to mine for it. I guess the... Uh, the prisons were full and they're not even hauling these vagrants off, which is hilarious. But they just leave them there. All right, there we go. Careful on the road. Those anti-slave cultists, bunch of loonies, freeing slaves and what have you. Yeah, so I'm I'm deep within slavery country, and uh, they don't take too kindly to those that don't enslave others. Oh, is this more city heroes? Yeah. Come on, taunt me. Taunt me. <laughs> city heroes is a, a, a small faction of minor faction, but... In this area of the world, you're going to find a lot of them. Uh, but these guys are patrolling or something. They're really not interested in interacting with me. Alright, I'll keep the pants on. Um, my run rate, my run speed is now 17 miles an hour. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is some laps around the city, just to try to get that up to like 18 or 19, which should allow me to, uh, to travel out of here a little bit more safely. And using the proximity to the town as security, uh, this is a, a pretty effective way of doing it. Oh no, it's uh, 16. Sorry. I must have clicked someone else. Yeah, I am deep in the Great Desert. That's where the rock bottom start starts. And if you are trying a rock bottom start for yourself, be very careful. It's very easy to be killed or enslaved before you even get started. Who's this? Oh, these are manhunters. So here we go. Here's a perfect example. These guys that I'm staring at right now, they're manhunters, and what they do is they travel around looking for unconscious people, slap shackles on them, and then sell them on the slave markets. 
they're they're slavers with no honor at all even less than me who took the gear of the vagrants so my athletics is eight now still doing some laps think of this as a uh, one punch man's uh, exercise routines right all right, I do have a question for you all. Ooh, look. Oh, here, here's the uh, animal claws and raw meat that I didn't mean to drop. I guess I uh, dropped them on the ground. Let me cook some of this uh, animal meat so I don't have to buy the dried meat. So the way to do that is hit B or the build menu, um, which is here, this button underneath me. And then go to camping and hit campfire. You're not going to be able to set campfires too close to a town, but you'll see it turn from blue to green as soon as we're outside of the radius of the town. And campfires, unlike other games, you just get to make for free. Ooh, I missed a pet Yoda. Hi, bud. And then just right clicking it, we'll stick the raw meat as input and output will be the dried meat. Some species are able to buy um, or eat like raw meat and it doesn't bother them, but if you mouse over it, it will tell you in you know, I might as well eat the, uh, the cooked meat. Okay. I also like to clean up after myself. So, um, if, you know, leaving, it's fine to leave, like, campfires all over the place. It's not that much of a problem, but... This one I might actually come back to, but I could also just right-click dismantle it and have it be gone. So you're not sort of littering everywhere. What is my speed? I'm encumbered, but it would be 17. Or almost 17. So we're getting there. Come on, Rockfin, get inside. Okay, I'm slightly encumbered. Ever so slightly. Uh, let's see. I'm going to sell the rag shirt. So, 17 miles an hour. Uh, the question I have for you all of you, and I'm going to pull you right now, is sh do you want me to make the run now or get my athletics a little higher? Should I try to run out of the desert? now. Yes. Uh, go running now. Or no, wait until you're faster. One is l more risky. One is more safe. And the choice is yours. What are you doing out here? The thief fence is just kind of standing here. Oh, he has some assassin's rags on him. Assassin's rags are actually pretty good armor. Um, but it doesn't help with melee defense, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to dress in another faction's rags, not yet. Let me put a little timer on that. Another thing I'm doing is I'm sort of looking around, seeing if there's opportunities to loot, uh, because the... United Cities police might knock some additional people out. I could also level up my strength a little bit as well. Um, you know, if I leveled up my strength, I would want to encumber myself with maybe some copper ore or go buy a backpack or something like that. And then once encumbered, pick up one of the unconscious or dead vagrants and... Uh, it's a little grim, a little gory. I can also use the dead vagrants as a backpack. That's another weird trick that you can do is um, load up a corpse or load up a body with loot and run around with them on your shoulder. So people are asking, what am I planning on doing? I'm planning on trying to recruit. I don't really care so much about uh, where I'm moving permanently. I'm not 
making a settlement without people to be settlers. So, uh, first order of business is to try to get to the cities that will allow me to recruit others check. Now, it does mean going into uh, sort of the forbidden cities, but as long as I don't trade with those forbidden cities, it's fine. So the forbidden cities for trade would be Shek run cities like Squin or Last Stand or Admeg. I can't trade with them because I'm not I'm I don't want to support their regime, but I can travel to their bars and recruit the people that are sitting there. So as I get encumbered, you can see my strength XP go up meaning that I can level up strength more easily and my athletics go down because I'm, I'm, you know, getting encumbered. So you guys still want me to level up my athletics a little bit more. So after I, I get this last unit of copper, I'm going to do some running. I also might want to spend some time looting the skimmers that the town guard are uh, eliminating because they're, their meat I can cook and their claws I can sell. It's like following around... Geralt, and uh, just plucking out the claws and eyes, not my own, for my fights, but. All right, one, two, three, four, five. I've got 3,300. Let's get out to the skimmer. Loot them for, oh, they got back up. The town guard should have them swiftly up. There we go. Swiftly unconscious. When you loot any of the body parts of a creature, it immediately kills that creature. So that skimmer there, as soon as I pulled out the first unit of meat, it died. It's a, it's a really effective way to KO critters, uh, which is ever more important the more dangerous they are. So some critters like beak things or leviathans uh, you definitely don't want to allow them to get back up alternatively you can throw them over your shoulder and if you're carrying them around with you like luggage they also won't fuss either an odd way to do it but a way nonetheless see i am i am cooking this uh the good meat of the skimmer up and dismantling the campfire and then let's go sell the claws All right. The meat I have on me is actually encumbering me, which is kind of funny. I'm, every time I come in, I, I should do a quick scan to see if there's any Shaq willing to talk. A lot of these Shaq in here are just patrons, and they have no interest in being bothered at all, and you can't interact with them. But every now and then, you can find someone uh, who wants to be recruited. Oh, here we go. A thieves backpack. Um, I don't quite have the money for this, but this is a... This is one of my favorite backpacks. It doesn't slow you down. It reduces the weight of the things you carry. There is a smaller version of this, uh, which might be a little bit cheaper, but those are my favorite backpacks for people that do combat. So there's two styles of backpacks in the game. There are one style of backpack that doesn't allow items to stack. And then there's another style, the trader style backpacks that allow items to stack. So if you're wondering what that means, um, in that that thieves backpack, these meats couldn't be stacked up. But in a trader's backpack, these meats could be stacked in stacks of five, allowing you to consider to carry uh, a, a considerable more than the regular backpacks. But they usually come with uh, dramatic penalties to um, combat. So that's another important thing: is um, most of the backpacks in the game have huge combat penalties. Which, if you're trying to fight for your life, uh, you, you may want to avoid. Oh, more city heroes. I'm actually going to, as soon as I get the copper, I'm going to see if I can't taunt these city heroes into fighting. Yeah, some items are always stackable, as Ron says. But not all. Mo most aren't. Uh, but like things like tooth uh, ammunition is always stackable. That would be a good example. Hello? Alright, I can't attack them unprovoked, but it looks like they're busy and they're not gonna 
They're not going to talk to me at all. Let me go sell my... Oh, that's not a... That's not an entryway. Let me go sell my copper so I can level up my athletics more efficiently. Look at these slave hunters. They look like slaves. Barely wearing clothing. One of them got their butt kicked. So I'm going to spend... I'm going to try to get out of this desert as fast as I can. Because the game... Oh, look at this one. Oh, he's a city hero that is, uh... Crawling around on the ground. He he clearly lost his fight. Alright, 17 miles an hour. Bash him on the head. <laughs> Attacking him unprovoked within city limits would be a little dangerous, though. That's the problem. Because then the city guard would fight me. Which is not what I want. Alright, let's do some uh, athletics training. So my athletics is at 12 now. Now another thing that I could try to do is to wear... Certain shoes allow you to run a little bit faster, but... Trying to buy those specific style of shoes in the United States uh, cities is unusual because they're they're pretty uncommon for this area. We need some rocky music. I know, you know it. The town guard are probably thinking I'm psychotic, just looping around their walls like a loon. But it's safe. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, uh, and the hero boss just got walloped and thrown back in the clink. He must have tried to escape. That's hilarious. Yeah, athletics is still climbing. If I open up the stats here, you can see it uh, leveling up in the bar, that green bar. So we're almost up to 15. Yeah, there's 15. And what we're trying to get is to be running at around 19 miles an hour. Most of... So if it, the way to determine that, if you look at like these guards, for instance. Some of these guards are actually these guards. This guard specifically, because he's Hiver, he runs real fast. 24 miles... Well, 27 miles an hour, which is like Usain Bolt speed. Because uh, Hivers are particularly fast. But then if you look at the sergeant, he runs at 19... This guy runs at 20, this guy runs at 18, this guy runs at 20. So, something like 21 miles an hour would be ideal, but I am I might not want to train that long. Also, we just have to outrun the skimmers. So, the skimmers are really slow at 14 miles an hour, and then most of the United City heroes that would, uh, and sand ninjas out here in the wild that would uh, ambush me, they mostly run at like 18 miles an hour or so. But there's no, there's no perfect speed. Uh, ultimately... There's always something that's going to be faster than you until you have, like, cyber beep legs. Uh, so, you, you know, there's no... It, it's useful to be fast, but uh, it takes a lot of training and a lot of prosthetics to outrun things like big things, which run it. What do big things run at? Like, 36 miles an hour or something like that? Yeah. there's. That's beyond the top speed of a Sheck, by far. Uh, I think Sheck top out at, like, 25 miles an hour. But yeah, at, at about 18 miles an hour, you are safe from most. And that's that's what we're going for here. With my hard-earned money. Well, not really. Uh, my stolen money. Oh, here's some sand ninjas. Let's see how fast they move. Uh, 21. 21, 18. So the other thing is, just because they're faster than you, doesn't mean they can run up to you and swing. So you can... 
you can sort of kite away from things that are faster than you if you, the moment they stop to swing on you, if you're still running, it's going to be hard for them to land a hit. However, if there's like a swarm of them, they're going to get in your way and block you and ging up and take you down. So now I am, oh, still at 17 miles an hour. I think I'm going to run to the nearby stone camp. As practice, rather than going around the town over and over and over, and just try to be as cautious as I can. Once I get up to athletics 20 or so, I should be okay. Oh. Unless we want to beat up an escaped slave. Or a pack of Garu. I'm not doing that. Huh. We have a... A noble hunter. Oh god. Don't be shooting at me. Ow! Jesus, why are you shooting at me? And I am currently unconscious. I have no idea why they just opened fire on me. And that is how nasty the United Cities are. Just winging bolts at me for no reason. Yeah, you slave hunting? I don't know if I'm going to be able to gain consciousness from this. We'll see. I do have auto saves if I absolutely need it. But this is the Kenshi experience. I should not have moved towards him. Because the problem is, my stomach is lower than zero now. So I might be in a recovery coma. Uh, so we'll... We'll we'll see. Oh yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> I should have a save scum counter. So the problem there was he had, I'm guessing, an eagle cross weapon, and he just hit me in the leg, preventing me from being able to run, like, as soon as I tried. But that is the story. That is, uh, that's the story of Kenshi. I should not have gotten close. And I should have listened to myself and just ran laps around this town and avoided the noble slave hunters that just wanted to shoot me. So we, we've only lost, like, uh, what, what are my stats at? Uh, a little bit lower. I'm still going to make a run for um, heft. I'm going to chance it. Jim Bob and, and Rob's, thanks for the, the resub and the bits. All right. In Shobatai, I'm going to try to spend what money I have before I leave. Not all of it. But some of it on gear that might be able to help me. Uh, I can't afford the thieves' backpack, so I think what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to mine until I can afford the thieves' backpack, and then uh, make a break for it. Try to get out of here. Cause nobody's nice out here. So they're mercenaries, they're not going to bother me. Samurai police. More samurai police. Now there are some factions that will patch you up if you, they, you get knocked out, but really not all of them. Many of them won't. So that's another thing to be wary of is... In the desert here, uh, they're going to slap shackles on your feet or just let you bleed out where's the death counter well I didn't die I, I was fatally bleeding but technically not dead right buddy Yoda seems to agree man laboring is something that the Shek are terrible at racially that is. Trying to get this copper is just brutal. So the sell value of this is about 160 each. I'm going to need a whole lot of them to cover that thieves backpack. Ideally, I would like to loot dead things or unconscious things. But I don't see any opportunities for that. Thank you for watching Kenshi Shek's Conquest.
and a special thanks to all of you Twitch subscribers and Patreon patrons for allowing content like this to exist. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams, as well as a link to Discord where you can sign up for notifications and announcements. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.